while it's nasty and rainy storming today i'm going to try to get our uh, hay equipment in good working order because here in a few weeks hopefully we're going to need it if we can get some dry weather i mean the grass the grass is ready corn's coming up good i mean the rain's benefiting something but it's not good for for hay making but you can see the uh square baler there i gotta get the tires aired up i'm gonna try to get everything greased up good get the ba the baler uh round baler get it greased up and ready got my rake fixed it it had to be welded up so hey i should be good to go i just gotta change the blades on my mower and just a little maintenance this morning so that's what we're doing here on willow branch farms well gonna go ahead get these goats fed we don't feed these goats that's all you're gonna hear in the whole video is them complaining belly aching so these are my pygmy goats you can see that's Lakota that's the other black one is Norman. Those are both registered pygmy goats. Those are my breeding bucks, billies. They do their job pretty good. The others are kind of some mixed goats, but I do have some uh, purebred nanny goats in there too. Like that little caramel one. That's one of my new babies there. Let's get these critters fed so they'll quieten up. Things are a whole lot quieter in here once you get these guys some feed. It's kind of like my family at supper time. They're all loud till you sit down and it's time to eat and everybody gets quiet. This is one of my, my other new babies right here too. And then here's my little caramel. We named her Coco. She's a cutie. Well, everybody's fed and happy now, so it'll be a good time to go start working on this hay equipment, getting it all ready for season. It'll be here before you know it. It's a pretty cool day, feels great today, but I know it's gonna turn off, get hot, and be time to start making hay. I'll try to show you something here. I had this cow that I've been watching her religiously like I knew she was going to have a calf any time. I had to go out of town for a week. Well, guess when she had it? You can see a little guy right there. That's our new calf. Good looking fellow out right there. There's his mom with the big bag. Well, the weather can't make up its mind on what it wants to do. Still cloudy, but sun's trying to peek out a little now, but I uh, just want to tell you a little bit about this farm here. Um, one thing, you know, if you see the sign there, we named it Willow Branch Farm and I've lived here my whole life and uh, never really realized that that creek down here, I don't know if you can see it there, but if you look up on the map, it's called Willow Branch. So hence Willow Branch Farms. So let's see, you can see, you know, that's the shed there where the tractor stays. 
you know they're in pretty good shape honestly like for as old as they are i'm gonna say they're every bit of probably 70 years old and uh the inside the bones of them are great but um you know the outside's getting a little wear and tear which is normal and then the uh barn is there behind me but it's my old uh my great grandparents old place and you know once they passed away my grandfather inherited it and he's since passed away so you know i decided uh you know when i decided i wanted to get into dabbling into the farming which you know my kids maybe my family thought i was having a midlife crisis i don't know i think it's just something that's in your blood and uh it really is just resurfaced now you know in my later years i don't know uh probably when i was younger i probably didn't care nothing about it but i don't know it's something that i enjoy doing and you know i hate to see these old barns sitting here with nothing going on just rotting down i feel like they're at least being used for the purpose they were built for and i'd like to think that my great grandparents and my grandfather probably would be happy to to see that the farm is still still continuing here but i think there's something that's kind of special you know this being handed down from generations from my great grandparents to my grandfather and now i'm using it uh, i don't know it just kind of holds a little special place in my heart also something else that i've kind of had a greater respect for now is you know taking care of the land being a good steward of the land i feel like what you give this land you know it gives you back tenfold i mean look at all this grass you know that's what i'm about to get ready here to start getting the hay equipment we're about to get some uh dry weather i think next week so i'm gonna try to get everything up and going but i mean you can see all this grass right here i mean it's actually past time to cut but you know what can you do when it rains every other day during the spring but for now i think we're going to get a dry spell and or i hope we do i'll tell you something else that you really don't realize when you're younger until you get older is how self-sustainable we were back then or and how blessed we were back then i mean our family we each i mean we had a freezer full of pork had all the sausage country hams uh, each family basically had a beef we had a freezer full of beef and you know big huge garden vegetable gardens all the vegetables you could eat man but was it hard work absolutely but you know there's something rewarding about being able to plant your own food and know where it's coming from and kind of like raising your own beef you know i know what my cows are eating i know there's no growth hormones no antibiotics no anything and i think just being able to supply my family with good clean healthy meat for the freezer is a uh, something that i just enjoy doing also i tell you another thing i enjoy watching too is these uh these youtube videos where these homesteads and different ones show you know butchering the animal i think it's important for us to know you know how to butcher an animal and where our food comes from in general you know we put a lot of hard work into taking care of these animals feeding these animals meeting their basic needs just trying to keep them healthy and then you know butchering them is just part of the process you know i've got one over here that he's a pet i mean i love to he's really nice lets me pet him and all but you know i hope that i'm giving him a good life and that he enjoys his time that he has here on the farm you know versus what he might have got somewhere else so but enough talking with all that being said i really need to get busy i gotta get the hay rake square baler round baler i gotta get all of those greased and uh just going through tire, tires aired up just make sure everything's good to go because i feel like this weekend I'm going to start cutting hay and I think we're going to have four or five days of dry weather so I mean what else can you ask for so let's get busy
little handy deal right here. I picked this thing up. And you put it on there, it tells you the air pressure. You just set it to what pressure you want it to. It runs on the batteries. I have plenty of those batteries. So I keep this thing handy at all times in case I have a flat tire or just need to air up something. Man, this thing, this sucker's handy right here. see this knotter right here like I was saying I mean there's a fitting here 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 I mean they're just they're all over this thing but and yeah I kind of neglected it last year I ended up buying me a round baler and uh, I'll show you that here in a minute but usually I just square bailed everything and then I got that round baler and well when I put this one up I usually take uh, I got a little small leaf blower I come through here I blow out everything and I just didn't do it this past season but I think it's still gonna run fine it's been under the shed here I mean it hasn't got wet so so here's the round baler I got uh got everything greased up ready to go I haven't got to this yet I actually had to take I was trying to get the flat tire on my tether f fixed and I was just gonna take the tire to the tire shop I couldn't get the tire off I tried I tried it's probably best I didn't film that because it wasn't very pleasant but Ended up taking it to them, and I wasn't sure they were going to get the wheel off. But hey, we got it off, got a tube put on, but I wasted several hours of the day. So now I got to try to get this thing in order and ready. This is the uh, Ver Vermeer 504M Classic. It's got the net wrap and the twine, but I just used the net wrap on this. It makes a good tight bell. Uh, I don't know I'm really pleased with it it can eat up some hay but I gotta get busy get this thing fixed up and that should be it for today hopefully uh, this weekend we're gonna be cutting hay so stay tuned well I almost forgot the most important thing here the very first thing I'm gonna need is my my mower my hay mower here I've got a uh, Tar River it's that BDR 185 a drum mower I got to put the blades on it and if I can I'll try to show you how you put the blades on it's very easy it has a little tool you just pull it up pop the blade in but I gotta get those changed because the blades on there are absolutely wore out but you know there's not a whole lot of maintenance with it and you can cut as fast as you can go the only downfall I, I say with it it's a well not its fault but it's only six foot and the more hay ground I keep picking up it'd be nice to have a eight nine you know foot mower but hey I'm not gonna complain it gets the job done and I never had any problems with it other than uh, the uh, PTO shaft on there I cut it too big wasn't really its fault and it got jammed up in there and anyway it caused some issues <laughs> but that was my fault so anyway let's get these blades put on so these are the blades I have this little hole in the end right here and they go inside there like that you can see that one's completely worn out I don't know I probably can't do this with one hand so I might have to figure out somewhere to put the camera hold on one sec I'm gonna try to get this done before I run out of battery. 
So this is the, the tool that you use. It's got this little cook deal on the end and I mean, you can kind of see the shape of it. All it really does is goes up in here like, more or less it just pries this up like this. There's a lot of grass stuck on there, but pull that one off. Whoa. Pry it up. The next one pops right in. And we do the next one. Got the new blades on there. Took maybe five minutes. There's three on each drum. And uh, just pop them out, put a new one in. So got that done. Um, the teeth for the rake came in today from Shoop. And I'm about to put those on. And my battery's getting really low. So hopefully uh, I can get to show you those. Sun going down. We still got some time. I'm about to start working on this rake here. But I thought that was kind of pretty with that sun shining on that corn right now they're planting over at my house right now i thought about it i could have got the camera out and videoed them but they'll probably still be there when i get back so let's get on this rake so as you can see here this uh rake's missing these two teeth right here together it's actually missing about 20 in total but i'm gonna use my handy dandy little beater tool here Pulls right out. <clears throat> so here's the new tooth. Hopefully it fits. It looks like it should. What I thought was pretty cool is they come with the nuts and bolts, which is awesome. All right, let's see if they fit. Tell you what makes this task even more difficult. Hopefully the camera don't fall off there. That's one of my cameras that I used during uh, when we did the uh, waterfowl, like the hunting show. And the tripod on it is broke. So, the hole where the tripod mount screws in is broke. So I can't use a tripod until I buy another one or something. Well, those fit perfect. Exactly what you want. Put the nut on there. like that man the new ones on there that may be just the easiest thing I've done all day so I want to take you on a little tour here you can see behind me turn my phone on silent okay so this is the little tool, really. 